Is that a little more than you can handle this time? Besides, you're gonna give it a try? What do you think? Hey, it's Doris with Aldi Books, and I thought I would share my bullet journal setup with you. It's mostly bookish, so I thought you might find that interesting. This is just my intro page for 2018. I've been using it since last since school started last fall. Um, so here is my January calendar, and I've been making this setup for over a year now. But I've started color coding the weeks, so or the days. So these coral days were days that I had off of school. And then I put several readathons that I was interested in doing on here. So the blue week was um, Battle Books, and this purple one was a one day, 24 hour readathon. And then um, this green one is. Um, Biannual Bibliothon, which I think I'm not going to do. Um, I'm not in the mood and the challenges didn't really inspire me. But I am doing 24 and 48 that last weekend of January. I'm pretty excited about that. So then I just colored the random leftover days pink. And like here's my... Um, information about the different weeks and you know forward planning for next month the notes and things so yeah this really works really well for me then for my booktube channel over here I keep um, video ideas things I want to do or might want to do and I just made little squares because um, I like writing in contained spaces and I like color on the page and then over here when I actually upload a video I write it in over here so I can kind of um, pace myself and the blues are the weekends just kind of to divide the month out this is how I keep track of my um, healthy stuff <laughs> and I, I can't even explain to you why this works for me I've tried those just little check off habit tracker boxes and I can't keep up with them but if I draw little pictures, I, I can keep up with it. It's, it's very random and strange. But um, This month, these little creatures are my water. So I drank enough water those days. And um, yeah, I don't like to eat my vegetables. So I draw in. I try to make sure I eat at least one vegetable every day. Um, the little hand weights here and then the arrows are for the treadmill or walking outside if the weather's nice which um, it's not because it's winter yucky um, this is another month this month I um, used the little cactus for the water and then this month I used um, little fish for the water and the panda the bears were the days that I was like totally irresponsible and just didn't do anything healthy um I think there were porcupines on this other page and this page it's the sumo wrestlers so yeah this totally works for me I don't know why but anyway and then my meal planning I I make notes down here of things I want to cook that month and the first column I check it off when I know that I've bought the supplies from the grocery and I have them at home and then the second column I check off when we've cooked that and then I write it in up here when we've cooked it as well so that I know because I'm real nervous about I have a five day rule and I get nervous if something stays in the fridge past five days and I, I hate to waste food so yeah this works pretty good. And yeah, it's just Gabriel and I, so I can't cook every night because we can't keep up with the leftovers. Um, this is how I keep up with work to-do lists. So um, Monday through Thursday, Friday. And then this pink area here, this is um, time sensitive. So these are things that I have to do um, that day go in the top area here. 
and then things that I want to get done go in the bottom sections and then forward planning things that go on the next week and then place for notes and then this is um, how I do my personal planning and I haven't been doing a lot of that recently to be quite honest here's um, a page from October where I had you know this is my week at a glance stuff and then daily lists and then just some random things um, here's another one weeks at a glance and daily lists so yeah so then um, starting from the back this is where I keep my more bookish things so I've made my bookish list in the back here and I just started on the back page this is scribble scrabble this is how I'm keeping up with um, the books I read so this was last year and I'll go over that when I get to this year's list um, but this totally works for me as well I know an Excel spreadsheet would be much easier but not for me <laughs> this notes that I was making for vlogmas and bookish goals these are lists of books I'm interested in so when I see somebody on booktube recommend a book I take a screenshot of it and then every now and then I go through all those screenshots and write them down things that I'm really interested in and eventually interested in um, and I need to do that again because I'm getting a lot of pictures backlogged this is my plan for the year and I already talked about this in my goals video so I'll try to link that below in case you're interested in seeing it again but you can see I've already the red checks are books that I've bought already this year <laughs> but yeah this is going really well for me I'm enjoying it thoroughly um, this is a list of nonfiction authors I'm interested in and books they've written um, this is my goal for John Steinbeck I mentioned that in my goals video as well. I need to fill that in. These are my goals for this year. Favorites from last year. These are books that I think might pop up on book outlets, so I want to keep my eye open for them. These are video ideas that I'm working on this year. Um, I decided I wanted to check on the Reading Women Challenge periodically, so... I just taped that in here and made a list so I can write down the books that I read for each challenge. And then here is how I'm keeping up with my stats for the year. So just quickly, um, the title goes here, obviously. I color in a pink box over here if it's written by a female author. And at the end of the month, I tally up how many books I've read total and how many of those were women and write a little fraction there. The year that it was written in or published in, how many pages, um, the green squares were if it was a translated work and the language it was translated from. And then this first column is um, gray if it's nonfiction and this hot pink if it's literary fiction so then just anything left white would just be general fiction um, and then I'm doing things like I put a little M in the box if it's a memoir and circled it if it's a graphic novel um, C for classic and then the second column that's just for fiction reads so all my fiction then I go back and ask myself was it fantasy slash SFF uh, historical thriller horror mystery that kind of thing and color in those um, and I can even color in half squares if it was both because I don't like doing pie charts because then you have to choose one thing and most books are more than one thing so anyway notes um, and then here I'm just coloring in if I think it's a diverse author in some way, either, sorry, um, culturally or religion or things like that. Um, and then this last section is 
um, youth. So if it's blue, it's a YA, or if I put a little M on it, it's middle grades. The orange is library, so if I color it orange, it came from a library in some way. It could have been Audible or ebook, or if it's just orange, that means I got it from a physical book from probably the high school library. And then over here, I just, um, like I said in another video, I just make the assumption that all the books I'm reading are four star. <laughs> and then if I color in the square, that means it was a five star. And if I color it in purple, it was um, a three star. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's what I am doing to keep up with my life. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. And now I'm going to tack on a few random snow photos because we've been out of school all week and life is grand. Thanks for watching. Bye. So pretty. Still falling. We're not going to school tomorrow either. <laughs> oh, look at it falling. So pretty. What you think, guy? Is it pretty? Is it so pretty? All right. We got a full-size snowman today. Full two inches will do.